Hey folks, it's me again, Eric. I am uh, going on another camping trip and right off the bat, I've already run into some issues. Take a look at this. I'm just hiking back to the forest and there's already just a huge marsh in between the, well, the two fences where I can cross here, so I don't really have a choice. Ah, lovely. <laughs> My boots are getting stuck. Ah, yes. This feels good. Only <laughs> a little bit more to go. Yep, ah, socks are getting wet. It's good. Okay, I think we're out of the worst of it. Ah. All things considered, that was actually not that bad. Um, sure, there was a lot of water, but I have these uh, Canadian military surplus, uh, I think they're desert boots, uh, that I got at the surplus store for like 20 bucks. Uh, they were used, but they are in still in better condition than like any boots that I've actually owned before. Um, and like through all that muck and all that water, my socks barely got wet. So, like all things considered, it's actually not too bad. Uh, the entire forest is just like a marsh today. I'm in a dry spot right now, but uh, I was looking over the ravine and it's just a massive puddle. So, finding uh, some dry land tonight to camp on is going to be super important. So, anyway, let's keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it might just be time. What do we have here? Come on now. Don't want to pull at the stems, but looks like we got ourselves wild leak. It's still pretty small, but I reckon I can find some bigger ones to actually cook with my meal tonight, so I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Leaks! 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 There's leaks everywhere! Man, I could survive just off the leaks alone. Dang. One of the great things about wild leaks is that they just naturally have this kind of slimy kind of casing around them. So when you pull that off, all the dirt comes right with it, so it makes it super easy to clean. That's going to be good tonight. today's video I'm in the same forest as I was last time, I'm just on the other side of the river. Uh, I am going a little bit further off trail this time so that'll be nice because not as many hikers are gonna be walking by. It's windy today! It is really windy, okay let's get going. We've got like 52 kilometer an hour winds today. 
great. <laughs> Who dares me to swing from that vine? No one? Okay. Sorry, my dude. I don't speak parcel tongue. Damn, you got a friend. There's a snake in my boot. I'm gonna take a quick break just down by the river here to uh, collect some water. Getting a little bit thirsty. And then we'll carry on. Hey there, little guy. Just hopping along. All right, I won't bother you none. I've been hiking for over an hour now. It is uh, 1 p.m. I don't think I have too much further to go, but I am sweating up a storm. Just crazy. If ever any of you think, hey, that Eric guy, he's pretty smart. That's the devil talking. You're lying to yourself. I didn't bring any sunscreen or bug repellents or anything, but I mean, the bugs aren't bad, I can deal with that. <laughs> I burn like toast, so hopefully I'll walk out of it without just like blistering red sunburns. But you know, we'll see. Guys, I am one happy camper. My plan was to keep walking for about another half hour to an hour maybe. Uh, you know, find a good place to set up camp. But I just came across this beautiful cedar grove. I came inside to take a look around and just get out of the heat but it is beautiful. It is so nice and cool in here. He's got a nice canopy overhead. There are a lot of dead branches on all the trees. So that means I'm gonna have a ton of firewood. The ground is super flat. There's not a lot of things growing, so it'll make clearing my campsite easier. And there are some pines and spruces in here, so I might even be able to find some fatwood. So that'll be nice. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Uh, I'm gonna change my plan. I'm gonna camp here tonight. This place is perfect. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna find anything better. So this is my campsite. And you know, plans change. I mean, this is a happy change. I am glad I found this place. And I'm definitely gonna wanna come here again. This place is awesome. Not to mention that the river is like, honestly, 100 feet that way. So I'll have plenty of water and no issue getting that tonight. Ah, I'm so happy! <laughs> This is going to be my campsite tonight. It's got a bunch of trees right around me so I can tie them to whatever I want. The ground's nice and flat, it's pretty dry, there's not too much stuff. Uh, there's a big one on go. I think what I'm going to do is, just because the wind is going in this direction, I'm going to put a tie up between the tree that the camera is on right now and this tree over here. And then I'm just going to make a uh, an out of road back style or a lean to with my start. Um, and then maybe take a fire pit over here so that way I can uh, put my food back. It is time to get this backpack off. I am sweating like a dog. <laughs> Alright, let's get cracking. Do you guys ever just like accidentally do something really gross? I was picking up a leaf 
to just kind of crumple in my hands uh, and toss it in the air to see which direction the wind was going. And I didn't check the underside of it and there was a slug on it. So I'm just like rubbing it together between both my hands and I feel something just squish. And I look down and there's just slug guts and slime all over my hands. So I'm gonna go down to the river to wash that off. Now that I have the ground all cleared off, I think it's time for me to set up my tarp. It's supposed to rain later this afternoon. Uh, the sky doesn't look too bad now, but just in case, I want to have somewhere to put all my gear under. And, uh, you know, to sit under in case I get wet. I don't have any uh, extra clothes with me tonight. Um, so yeah, let's get that set up. Uh, Take a look at this little guy. Got slugs everywhere. If you watched my last video, you'll already be a master at this knot. We're just going to tie a taut line hitch. So just like last time, you're just going to take your rope and go one, two, under, and through. And then when you tighten all that down, you got yourself a lovely taut line hitch. And once more, One, two, under, and through. Guitar string. It's a little bit windy today. Can you see how much the trees are moving? I don't think I don't think the camera picks it up very well, but man, I've heard like two trees fall down in the distance. That's why I checked this site for any deadfall. I want to make real sure that nothing's going to fall on me tonight. Wow. She's a tad breezy. This time I went with a simple Adirondack style shelter. As you can see, it bears a striking resemblance to the setup that I did last time. Uh, and that's because my tarp last time was, I don't know, kind of a spoof of this. Uh, I didn't film setting it up just because it is really windy out today. It goes up to like, I don't know, like 52 kilometers an hour uh, whenever there's a big gust. Um, but I'll give you a, a quick rundown. So basically, Ridge line with two taut line hitches on this tree and this tree. Just use the Prussix knot and the toggles to keep each uh, of those nice and taut. Around the back here, I just put a peg in here and a peg in here. And I uh, just kind of scooped the last corner underneath. I have a peg out in this corner, a peg out in this corner. And then I just took the front corner of the tarp and pegged it down there. So as you can see, the inside has a ton of room in there. I've got the back part of it, again, tied off to that tree over there just to give me a little bit of extra height inside. I'm gonna put my bag on the little corner that's underneath there just to keep it dry and off the ground. And then uh, I think I'm gonna line my Reflectix pad on the ground just so that way uh, I don't have to worry about any little sticks or anything putting a hole in my air pad because that would really suck. And then uh, I've got my sleeping bag over there. So let me get my sleep system set up and then uh, yeah, I can do something else. Oopsie 
crazy. I'm gonna leave my sleeping bag in the stuff sack right now, with the compression sack, just because uh, I don't want a bunch of slugs and stuff crawling into my sleeping bag while I'm out doing stuff. So I'm only gonna unpack this when I go to bed at night. So right now it's just gonna sit there and basically weigh my air pad down to stop from being taken away by the wind. Same with my camping pillow, I'm just gonna put it inside this stuff sack to uh, keep the bugs off of it. Weather update, wind is now up to around 75 kilometers per hour. I have been listening to trees fall like all afternoon. Um, it's supposed to die down a little bit at around like 10.30 tonight. Um, I'll probably still be up by then. So yeah, just keeping an eye out for that. Well folks, it's that time of day again. My camp is all set up and it's time for mountain man Eric to explore the forest and see what kind of food he can forage for himself. There's a little bit more growing than the last time I was out here, so I might have a little bit better luck. You gotta keep a watchful eye open. Oh, like right here. This is perfect. Check it out. A couple of wild tree sandwiches. Oh, nice. Got two of them. You know they're fresh because I picked them right off the tree. I love nature. feel the tree I'm leaning against move back and forth. It's so trippy. <laughs> it's about three o'clock now. I still have about five or six hours of light left, so I am in no rush to get anything done. I think I might go out and start collecting some firewood. Just, you know, kind of get the hard stuff out of the way so that way I can relax later, maybe build a uh, a little bushcraft chair just so I have something to sit in while I sit by the fire. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to ride my bicycle? Jolly good. Just cutting off some dead branches here. Look for a little bit of fat wood. Help me light my fire tonight. Little, not too much. There's not much there. Well, I'm going to go for a uh, couple of the bigger dead branches and see if I can find some fat wood. Uh, wish me luck.
Conifers like pine and spruce all have really, really thick, viscous tree sap that contains a chemical called terpene. Uh, and what happens is whenever there is an injury, say, to a limb or it falls off or it just dies, uh, a lot of that tree sap um, or that resin will go towards the base of the branches and just kind of accumulate there, kind of like a, a blood clot, if you will. So what you get is whenever one of these branches dies, if you saw it off at the very base, you kind of get that accumulation of the resin for say like the first inch or so. So you can see on here that it's more orange than say it would be on this side. So that orange tinge is kind of what tells you know that there's fat wood there and if you give it a smell, it smells a lot like turpentine. Uh, it's, it's an unmistakable smell. And so what you do is you just gotta shave that off a bit uh, and then that will catch a spark because turpentine is very volatile. Here, check this out. You see that difference in the color gradient between the regular wood and the fat wood? Look how orange that is. That is all resin. That is going to light up so easily. Now the fat wood doesn't go all the way to the center uh, on most branches, so I'm only going to take the stuff from the outside. I've got a bunch uh, of other small branches that also have fat wood in them so I'll uh, get some of those shavings and I'll put them uh, to the side so that way I can use them to light the fire. I've got most of my firewood processed now uh, let me take you through what I have. So just in here to keep out of the wind I've got my little piles of fat wood that I'm going to use to start the fire. I've got my twigs uh, anywhere from like pencil to pencil lead size about pinky size thumb size, then we're getting up to the big stuff, the halved and quartered pieces, and then I just have three big logs there. I went a little bit overkill on the firewood, as I pretty much always do. I don't know, you know, there's no harm in it, it's better to be, better to have too much than too little. I also need to remember to keep some of this inside my tarp with me, because I always forget to do that, I always leave it out the night before. It sucks in the morning, because a lot of it is damp from the dew and so it's, it's just that much harder to start my fire in the morning so sometimes I need to you know go and collect more stuff so I'm gonna put a bunch of this in my tarp right now so that way I don't forget you might be asking yourself Eric don't you get a little bit sketched out that there are trees falling all over you the answer is yes I am a little sketched out just a little bit I picked my spot really well though so all of the dead trees that I can see around me, it's literally impossible for them to hit my campsite. But still, you know, it's still kind of sketchy when you're walking around and the trees are, you know, bending like 30 degrees in either direction. Uh, but yes, you'd be right. You'd be right. It's times like this that I remember my time in Little League. Hey, buddy. Hey, dog. Come here. Come here. All right, bye, buddy. Random dog out in the wilderness. What do you know? Anyway, so like I was saying, times like this remind me of uh, the time I spent in Little League. It'd be like, hey, what's Eric doing in outfield there? Oh, I'm just taking a hold of the stick. Basically summed up my baseball career. I am digging a small fire pit uh, just so that way it's a little bit easier to contain some of There is a lot of dead stuff on the ground and I just want to make sure that uh, you know I'm I'm having the fire safely. So I'm just gonna dig a little fire pit. I won't keep it going too long tonight. Like last time I don't need it to stay warm. I'm just using it to cook my food and to sit by uh, when it gets dark. So Alright, back to it. 
behold, my tiny fire hole. <laughs> I just went out to collect some more leaks. Got a good half dozen now, so that should go well with what I'm going to eat tonight. I'm just going to chop them up and add them to my dinner. This is kind of nice. A couple of small rapids. That one wasn't too bad. I think that I am going to build a bush chair. And for those of you who don't know what that is, yes, it's a chair that you make out in the bush. Wow. I have all my materials ready to build my bushcraft chair, so get ready for a chair montage. Although that montage was fun and festive, uh, I am actually going to show you what it was that I did to build this because it is a little bit more complicated than that. Not by much, but you know, th there are a few details I want to share with you. So it's really straightforward. All it is is just two base pieces, another two pieces that go lengthways, and then two more that go front to back. That's just going to give you enough height uh, to be comfortably off the ground. Then after that, I've got these six relatively even and straight pieces of wood that make the actual seat. And then I actually have four sticks at the back that make the backrest and they give you just a little bit of spring. So it's, uh, it's kind of nice. Um, if you try to sit down immediately, you will notice that these things just roll all over the place. So what I did was I just took a couple of sticks, put them in each corner to kind of keep the actual seat together and stop these from rolling. And then I have another one in the back right here. And a final one right here. And there you have it. Nice comfortable bush chair to enjoy by your fire. I'll do this now while I have the light. Uh, so let's go through what food I brought tonight. Okay. So I didn't bring a steak tonight, I'm just keeping it kind of easy. So I have uh, Uncle Ben's Bistro Two Minute Rice that I'm going to take a little bit of kielbasa, cut it up, throw it in there. I'm going to throw in the leeks that I have as well with it. Um, I have my peanut M&M and trail mix bag in case I get snacky, which I always get snacky. And two garlic bread stick things with cheese on them. I got them with a pizza that I ordered the other night and they're delicious. So I'm looking forward to this. I have uh, oatmeal for breakfast tomorrow. That's in uh, one of my canteens though. So I'm not gonna show that to you. It's oatmeal, you know what it looks like. And uh, yeah, I also have three beers with me. Let me go get them. All right, so I have these three beers with me. I have Hop City. Barking Squirrel, it's a nice amber lager. I have Sapporo Premium Beer because I'm very bougie. Um, no, one of my uh, my new roommate really likes this beer though, and I've never tried it, so I thought I'd give it a shot tonight. And uh, last but not least, always a fan favorite, Records Red. Not quite as good as On Tap, but uh, still a damn fine beer. 
Well, it's about five to seven right now. There's about just under two hours of light left in the day, so I think it's time we went for a hike. Let's go. Guess we're going this way. Do you see what I mean when I tell you trees are falling down everywhere? More trees, more trees. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's the end of the hike. It was a lot shorter than I expected it to be, but... Oh well, that was a lot of uphill. So going back is going to feel a lot better. Alright, let's go back. And we're back to home sweet home. That was fun, it was pretty short, but still fun. All right, let's get this fire going. I've had enough of this dilly-dallying. I am hungry and I am going to eat. Yes, I'm going to eat. Actually, no, I am really excited for that uh, kielbasa. I mean, the beer and the sausage are really what I'm looking forward to here, but no, I think honestly all of it's going to be good. The leaks are going to go well with it. Let's get this started. So you can see already in the fire hole, the fire pit that I dug earlier, uh, I've got the piece of wood that I split laid out as a base, and I have uh, the fat wood shavings all ready to go on the inside. I've got just a couple of extra wood shavings on the side and some thin sticks to put on top of that here. And then over there I've got uh, the thicker and thicker stuff, etc, etc. So why don't we go ahead and get this lit.
Tada, you have a fire. Now I know that this chair that we made earlier does not look like much, but trust me, after a long day of walking around and doing work and stuff, this oh, is a throne. After so long of just doing this and doing that and walking around, being able to sit down like a normal person is a luxury. So I'm really glad that I made this. My legs are pretty tired, so I'm going to enjoy sitting by the fire tonight. The fire is looking really good. I could honestly probably start cooking my food now if I wanted to. I am going to wait a little bit though because I, I think I still have close to an hour left of light left. The sun is setting so it's getting a little bit darker in here but I do want to wait a little bit. So I'm going to keep uh, feeding it for a while before I cook. Whenever I come out here I always turn my phone off. I don't like having the distraction of the outside world. Um, you know, if I, ha if I get any texts or any emails or anything, I will deal with it tomorrow when I get home. I like to be here in the moment, doing what it is that I do, just by myself, enjoying nature. There is one thing, however, that I will use my phone for when I'm out here, and that is to listen to some music. Not just, you know, for fun when I'm doing stuff, I like to hear nature when I'm doing that. But whenever I'm sitting by the fire or whenever I'm walking in, I love to listen to this one song. Um, I'm not sure what it's called, I think it's called What is Free, but it's basically my camping song. The reason why I'm not sure what it's called is because it was actually a part of the soundtrack to a movie um, called Cry of the Wild that uh, was made in 1972 um, by Bill Mason. He is basically the only actor and he kind of directed and edited and did, did everything. Uh, it was a really popular movie back in the day, back in the 70s. Uh, I think it had like, I don't know, like $5 million in the box office which is, you know, pretty freaking good for back then. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not actually sure what it's called, and the only place that you can find the song, as far as I'm aware, because I've searched for it, is in the actual movie. So it is available online. It's called Cry of the Wild by Bill Mason. It's a movie about uh, Bill who goes out into the uh, northern areas of Canada, and he goes and he basically he studies wolves. So he will go out for weeks to months at a time, you know, in a backpack with all his gear and his camera equipment, and he goes out to film wolves in the natural habitat. Um, and there's one point early on in the movie, maybe like 10 minutes in or so, where, you know, he, they play this song as he's, you know, hiking up, kind of setting up camp and filming some stuff. Um, I heard the song back when I was younger because uh, I got the movie as a gift, and to this day it is still one of my favorite movies. It's very nostalgic for me. You know, makes me miss coming out into the woods, makes me kind of wanderlust, for lack of a better term. Um, but like I said, highly recommend the movie Cry of the Wild, Bill Mason. Uh, you should definitely watch it. Except for you, Jesse. You're not allowed to watch it unless it's with me. And I'm serious about that. I'm serious. But for anybody else who might be watching this, Cry of the Wild, Bill Mason, please watch it. If you like camping and you like the wilderness, you'll love this movie. It's so good. So good. You know what? I think I'm just going to play a little bit of the song What Is Free For You, just to give you a taste. I would love to have this song be part of the music uh, that I've edited into my videos. I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to actually get it, uh, you know, kind of over top of the video as I'm walking in, maybe as I'm hiking around. Um, that'd be cool. But if I can't, here it is. Does anybody else do this? Like, when you have a beer, 
one of the first things you do is just kind of like make a little indent here with your thumb. You can see the indent, right? Just right there. Just so that way it's like it's a little bit easier to grab as you're like taking a sip. Does anybody else do that or is that just me? Let me know. If you don't do that, you should try it. If you do do that, good for you. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. You know what? It's that time of night. I'm getting real hungry here, so I am going to start to cook up my dinner. So we got our Uncle Ben's Bistro Rice, Two Minute Express Oriental Style. Oh. And the, basically what I'm going to do is squish it up a little bit, open it. Before I do anything else, I'm going to want to boil some water. Now you might be thinking, Eric, if you're going to boil the water, why are you still using the water through your water filter? And that is a fair question. The reason is because this water comes out of the Thames River. And uh, personally, I'd rather just be extra safe. I'd rather not take the chance that uh, you know, boiling it doesn't completely make it safe, completely sanitize it, so I'm going to do it twice, once with the water filter and once with boiling it, uh, you know, just kind of be extra safe. Okay, right there on the fire. Right there on the fire. Alright, now while uh, the water boils up, I am going to slice up my kielbasa and uh, my leeks. And I'm just going to use this little piece of wood here as my cutting board. I'm just going to cut them up into little bits and then just toss them right in there with the rice. Okay. And then same thing with the leeks. Except they're just going to be little tiny pieces. And I'm just going to mix them in all together. This is a very full bag. Okay, and my water is boiled now. That is hot. Be careful when you do that. And now I'm just going to pour the water right into the Uncle Ben's bag with the kielbasa and the, the leeks. I'm going to go get my headlamp because it's starting to get dark out here. But uh, after that, I'm going to eat up. Well, dinner should be nice and done now, so let's take a taste. Should sure have got some leeks and some sausage on there. Mmm. That's nice. The leeks give it a really good flavor. That was a good choice. Alright, well, I'm going to keep eating this. I'm going to crack open the Sapporo, see how that tastes with uh, dinner. Yeah, I can see why uh, I can see why my roommate likes that. It's a nice beer.
and can't forget the thumb indent. It's gotta happen. Cheers, guys. Got my garlic bread fingers here. I'm just gonna toss them on a log right next to the fire to warm them up. And that is going to be a real treat. It's time to crack the last beer of the night. Rickers Red. Make that thumb indent. It's a mixture of both really cool and really creepy that every time I turn on my headlamp and I look around, there's like a dozen set of eyes that I see in the trees, just like the squirrels and the raccoons and, uh, you know, occasionally a deer, but like, there's just like a dozen set of eyes that are just glowing, looking at me. I don't know, it's kind of cool. I mean, obviously like, I know they're, they're squirrels and whatnot, but still, like, there's, it's just a little bit creepy. It's just a little bit creepy. <clears throat> All right, ladies and Germans. I think it is time for me to hit the hay. I am pretty tired at this point. I ate all my food, drank all my beers. I'm good to go. I have uh, a sleeping bag with me. And you're going to laugh at this, uh, but it's entirely overkill. But my sleeping bag I got at uh, the Armory Surplus store, just east of London. Same with a lot of my gear. And it is technically rated to minus 20. It's only supposed to get down to like positive 7 tonight. Um, but I've used a sleeping bag before in like minus 15, minus 20 weather and it does not hold up to that rating. Uh, last time I came out, if you watched my last video, you, you will have seen that I just used the two wool blankets. Uh, and at night, at certain points, I did get pretty cold with that. So tonight, I wasn't taking any chances, I wasn't pulling any punches, I brought the minus 20 sleeping bag. So I might be sweating my butt off tonight. I might not, we don't know, we're gonna find out. I just need to put out the fire and go to bed. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Well folks, the fire is out. I am all tucked into bed, ready to go to sleep. I. I'm looking forward to sawing some logs, to hitting the hay. So, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow, okay? Good night. Hey folks, good morning. It is 6.34 in the morning, the sun is just coming up. And, didn't sleep too bad last night. It was. Nice and warm for the most part in this thing, which is good. It still got down to like, you know, plus 7 degrees, but... Ugh, ugh, wasn't too cold at all. So I am gonna really quickly start up a small fire so that way I can just boil some water for my oatmeal. And then I'm gonna take this down and... Uh, See if I can find my way out of here. Alright, up and at him. Okay, water is boiling. Take that off. Now let's see if I can do this without spilling boiling water all over myself. That would be great. Voila! Right, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. 
came out the spoon that fell in the muck. Flame. Yesterday when I was cutting off the limbs of that uh, spruce tree uh, to find the fatwood, I plucked off a couple of needles. So this is a red spruce and I'm just going to take off a little chunk. I'm just going to bend and break the needles a bit then I'm just going to drop it in my hot water. Let that steep for about 10-15 minutes while I enjoy breakfast. There's nothing quite like a nice warm breakfast to wake up to. Alright, I'm going to finish this up, put the fire out, and then I'm going to start taking down camp. Now I'm going to enjoy that first tea. Bam! Almost like I was never here. Let's hit the trail. Fill up with water once more for the trek back. That's good enough. I'm taking a different way out than the way I came in, just to, I don't know, kind of see where I wind up. It's only about 20 after it right now, and I don't have a whole lot to do today other than uh, just edit the video. So, let's see where it takes us. I'm just about out of the woods, so that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah.